What is going on everybody welcome back to another video on the channel it is brian with kansas angling experience guide service out here on a beautiful monday morning uh my only day off this week to try and pump out a couple videos as you guys can see uh it's a little bit later in the morning uh yet generally for a guy that fishes like six days a week if he has one day off he's probably not going to get up early and go fishing so yeah it's about i don't know almost 10 30 right now the sun's super high we've got glass slick calm conditions behind us i'm sitting on uh giant piles of white bass right now as you can see they're not wanting to have anything to do with what I'm doing right now which is fine the goal for today was to come out and uh, try and go over a lot more of my live scope settings it's been a while since I've done a live scope video unless we're using it for like wipers and white bass on guide trips and stuff I'm really not using it that much in the summer to be honest like right now I'm not actually trying to get fish to eat on my screen I'm really just more of locating those groups of fish setting up away from them and casting to them and obviously when we're trolling crankbaits and pulling bottom bouncers for walleyes live scope is not down so I am long overdue for a live scope video it's obviously going to be a while before you guys see me do any crappie fishing. I'm a big time fair weather crappie fisherman. I do not like doing it in the summertime, even the fall. Winter time is prime time, and that's when a lot of those videos come out. So anyway, like I said, um, we're going to try and catch some fish today. But like I said, we are going to uh, mostly just focus on live scope settings, which is a question that I get asked a million times pretty much uh, every week. People literally call my personal cell phone asking me questions about live scope stuff, which I would very much appreciate unless you want to book a trip to not call my cell phone just send me an email or leave a comment down below. But yeah, should be a fun day. Uh, Danny gets off work later this afternoon, so we're probably gonna come out again for the evening bite. I do have some exciting things to talk about, uh, one of which I'm not gonna be able to talk about probably until the next video, but uh, on this one, I will give you guys a hint that um, probably not gonna be wearing Costa sunglasses for very much longer, so I'll be excited to share that news with you guys soon. But yeah, that's about it. Um, so we're gonna try and get some of these fish to bite right off the bat, uh, maybe a little bit later on in the video, we're gonna go over those live scope settings. So stick around uh, hopefully we'll get something done today all right guys let's do this let's talk live scope from top to bottom the unit that i use how i've got my live scope set up and the settings so if you guys don't already have live scope there's a couple things to consider uh, if you're going to purchase live scope how you want to set it up if you want to put the transducer on your trolling motor on a pole first question to ask yourself is how do you fish for me for example the separate pole transducer mounted on the pole works best for me being a full-time guide when i've got two people up here i can control the view of the transducer separately instead of relying on the trolling motor not having to have my foot on the foot pedal the whole time or even my remote so being able to spot lock in big wind and sit over big schools of wipers and stuff is absolutely key for me but for a lot of guys uh, putting it on your trolling motor is popular especially with crappie fishermen me personally if i could have one transducer on a pole and then also one on the trolling motor that would be ideal because i do do a lot of bass fishing situations like right now where i'm by myself uh, it would be nice to have one on the trolling motor on a dead flat calm day like today and be able to control that view and cast at the same time but that is just what works best for me not every scenario is going to be the same so definitely keep that in mind if you guys do decide to go the uh, separate pole mount situation route i do have a video on my channel of how i made this one right here uh, for about 16 dollars at home depot you can see i've kind of broke that i've got to replace this one yet but the ram mount is the most expensive part of that whole scenario right there but the uh, pvc and everything 16 bucks at home depot can't go wrong so as far as my unit itself this is the garmin echo map 93 sv this is the UHD model. The thing to consider when you're buying one, uh, I know they don't make them anymore, but the original Echo Map Plus series, the biggest thing to consider with that model right there is that they discontinued the updates for it. So as far as your live scope updates through your GLS 10 black box, you're not gonna be able to get those updates if you do not have a UHD model. So if you have the means to, uh, the Garmin Echo Map UHD 93 SV, as far as their base model is the route to go for live scope. Just make sure it's the UHD. Hey, you guys have probably seen this video before, but I will link it down below or up here or something. The best mount on the market uh, that I have found that I've been working with these guys for the last year is the stowaway mount. This is the regular stowaway version right here. 
it's the shorter version. It extends up to 30 something inches. They make the Stowaway XL, uh, which comes up even taller. I mean, literally this thing would be like probably right here if I had the XL. Awesome for crappie fishing, but having that extra leverage up is definitely gonna help over time your neck because I've got a bad back. So definitely helps to have that screen raised up. So if you guys wanna save 10% on a Stowaway mount, they're made locally here in uh, the Kansas and Missouri area. I can save you guys 10% with the KAE 10 discount code on stowawaymounts.com. That'll also be linked down below. But definitely consider getting yourself something to bring that screen up a lot higher. So now that's kind of the uh, the baseline stuff for what you need with live scope. So now that we've got that stuff out of the way, let's start looking at some fish and showing you what I have found to be the best settings that work for me on live scope. All right, so as you guys can see here, we are sitting over a big school of white bass that are kind of on this little hump uh, rock pile deal right here. And yes, we are dealing with the world's worst glare. So I apologize for that. There's unfortunately no way around that other than coming out uh, early in the morning to try and get this done. But this is just the kind of situation we're dealt with, but you guys be able to see the important stuff no matter what. So here we go. This is uh, my screen right here. I've got the color palette on the green one, but it does come defaulted to the amber. These are not reset to factory settings. Uh, we're just going to go through my settings and kind of show you what they do. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the menu screen, and that's going to bring up your baseline settings for the graph right here. We've got gain, depth range, forward range, pause, sonar transmit, sonar setup, and overlays. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do when you uh, turn your unit on for the first time is take it off of auto gain because that's what it will come preset to. I think it's preset to like auto medium. My gain, I like to keep right around 54%. If we go back to the home screen right here and show you on the graph, if I increase that gain, you're gonna get a lot more noise on the screen and that just looks awful. There's a lot of guys that actually run their gain real high, but uh, when you get down to that kind of 52 to 56 range, that's exactly where I wanna be as far as the gain goes. So now that we've got the gain dialed in here, you guys can see these on-screen controls are actually really helpful. I've got my one on-screen control set for the gain because I do adjust that sometimes. And then the forward range right now, which I've got set to 30. So if we go back to the menu screen, I'll show you guys the next step in the process of getting everything dialed in here. So we started off with gain. Depth range. Um, depth range is also gonna be something that you're gonna wanna play with on the fly. Also, the on-screen control on the right side is gonna control your depth range. You always wanna be right around two to five feet deeper than the depth that you're actually sitting in. So we're sitting in 15. I've actually got mine set to 20. Mostly just because we're actually we're in 15 set it to 25 the humps in about 15 right there That works well for me a lot of guys I mean you can go all the way to where your bottom is about halfway down or until it's all the way at the bottom I kind of like it mid-range But if you don't want to go in five foot increments with the uh, on-screen control You can just go to menu depth range and then just slide that up or down and that's obviously gonna change your uh, depth range a little bit more accurately, but that's completely up to you. Just make sure that it's within two to five feet deeper than the actual depth that you're in. All right, so now if we go back to the main menu here on your sonar setup, the next option there is gonna be forward range. Forward range shows you exactly how far out from the transducer you're shooting. So right now I've got mine set to 30 feet. 30 feet is right about where I want to be when I'm actually on fish. But when I'm looking for fish, like when I'm just kind of driving around, looking around, or especially when I'm fishing for crappie, if I'm looking for one individual fish or looking for a tree, I will set that all the way out to about 60 feet. So just remember on your uh, on your touch screen controls here, you can actually control that from the screen itself, uh, bumps down, up and down in five foot increments. So. Again, I usually keep that set right at around 60 or 70 feet when I'm looking for fish. And then when I find that what I'm looking for, I dial it back down to 30. So again, that's what works best for me. That's also what's gonna tell you how big the fish are. That's gonna tell you in relation to the boat where your jig is at, usually between zero and five feet, um, depending on where your transducer's at, but can be as far as 10 to 15 feet out, especially with the long crappie rods. So now that we've kind of covered your uh, depth range, your forward range and your regular gain, now let's get into the sonar setup itself, which is gonna help you get the best picture. So now again, uh, we're back. If we go to the regular screen here, go back to the main sonar menu, and now we're gonna go down to sonar setup, and this is gonna bring up a lot more options for you right here. So the first one here, we've got appearance. So we've got our color scheme, color gain, trails, and bottom fill. My color scheme right now is on black emerald. It really just kind of depends on the day, but 
with the new updates they've got several different color palettes to choose from really like i said it just depends on what works best for you what you're looking for this is the default setting right here the amber color which i've run forever i've just kind of been playing around with black emerald to see what things look like but as you guys can see there's a myriad of different color palettes that you can play with so just see what works best for you now the next option here is color gain color gain is probably the most underrated setting on the entire graph itself color gain is really just going to give you more highlights on your targets so the fish are going to show up brighter your jig's going to show up brighter bottom's going to show up brighter it comes set to default which i think is probably right around like 50 percent i've got mine anywhere bumped up from like 85 to 95 percent so definitely do not skimp on the uh, color gain mine was already set at 95 so that's where we're going to leave it but like i said guys that are complaining that they can't see their jigs or fish are showing up weird is probably because their color gain is still set on the default setting so always make sure that your color gain is dialed in if you're having trouble finding where your jigs are at and even just to kind of give you guys an example we'll go back to uh the color gain option here and just drop it all the way down i don't know if you're gonna get guys are gonna be able to see how much we're losing from that uh, how much brightness we're losing from those fish i can obviously tell but if you guys are new to live scope you're definitely just gonna have to get out on the water and play with it but always make sure that that color gains cranked up so then we'll go back to the menu here go back to sonar setup and appearance trails i always leave off i don't prefer to see kind of the trails of my jig the fish you can really already see that when they go down bottom fill is also off noise reject you've got off low and medium if we turn that off you can see how much clutter there is on the screen uh, i leave mine on high that gives me the best picture and we'll go back here now tvg tvg is time varying gain this one is a big one too um, i've got tvg set to off right now this is something that you're probably going to have to adjust on the fly based on how much sun there is how dirty or clear the water is right now our water is pretty clear and the sun is super bright so I've got TVG off, but if I turn that on low, medium, or high, that's really just gonna clean up the black picture a little bit if you've got uh, a lot of clutter and whatnot there. It's actually gonna be really tough for me to give you guys a good example on a day like today, but I like to leave mine off. But when you guys get out on the water, play with the low, medium, and high settings and kinda just see what that does for you, but I like keeping those off. Ghost Reject is a, uh, it's a new feature in the new update and Ghost Feed, or the Ghost Reject is something I thought would be a lot cooler than it is, but I leave my Ghost Reject off a big reason why i leave ghost reject off i mean you can kind of barely see it but depending on your depth like we're in 18 you're probably not going to have much but right up around here you're going to have this uh, big long line that's going to be the ghost tree it actually literally does look like a tree but it's just interference coming off the trend that's bouncing off the bottom in the new update they put the ghost reject on but i've kind of found that with the ghost reject on low medium or high i'm losing uh, detail on the screen and i was actually struggling after the new update i thought i completely ruined my settings but i had ghost reject on like medium or high and as soon as i turned it off I just had my settings back to normal again and it was perfect so i suggest you guys just kind of play with that but you're going to kind of figure out pretty quick that you might want to leave that off so back to the main sonar setup screen here overlay data uh just kind of shows you what you're going to have visuals for on the screen so device voltage i always leave that on because i want to see where my battery's at depth is on speed is off because i don't care about the speed up here or i can just see it on my remote water temp obviously leave that on and i do have the time of day on so that's all personal preference and then installation there's there's really not too much that you're going to want to leave on or off in here especially if you have this on the pole ahrs you're going to want to leave on orientation i always leave on forward i never use down so i just leave the orientation set to forward but you can actually just put that on auto if you want to if that pole bends one way or the other up or down that transducer is going to auto orientate to down which i find to kind of be a pain so that's why i was just leave mine on forward instead so yeah i mean if we go back to the main menu here there's really not too much else to uh to go over we went over the appearance, noise reject, TVG, and ghost reject. Just remember, again, in the uh, appearance settings, that's where you're gonna wanna play with your color gain. That's a big, big, big one right there. So always remember to adjust your color gain and take it off default. But other than that, that's pretty much it. You guys can see I've got a pretty clear picture. Again, it just depends on the day. I don't adjust settings all that much, but I mean, in our Kansas lakes, the water gets clear, it gets dirty if we get a big rain. So that's going to affect your settings. But again, my settings are not going to be a catch-all for everybody. I understand it helps to have, you know, that baseline foundation to get you started. But the biggest thing and the biggest piece of advice I can offer you is when you get 
get live scope, just take it out and just start playing with it. You may not even pick up a fishing rod for the first couple trips, or at least trying to fish fish. But just like with any piece of new technology, um, you're just gonna have to get out there and spend time on the water. Oh, and I guess one more thing that I forgot to mention before everyone starts freaking out about my voltage, I do run my black box and my front graph off of a DeWalt lithium drill battery. I have another video on my channel about that too, but my power is split between the black box and the graph itself. I do not have 20 volts running straight to the graph. You will fry your 18 volt maxed out graph if you run 20 straight to it, but I've got that DeWalt battery powering both my black box and the graph itself. So please don't leave any comments about freaking out about the voltage because it's just fine. And I highly recommend that setup if you're in the market for it. These are obviously not my favorite videos to do, but they are extremely helpful to a lot of people. I have several, I have a whole Garmin playlist full of videos, Echo Map tutorials, the Echo Map UHD tutorial, other live scope tutorials. I've got the live scope pole DIY build. This is all really to help you guys. So I hope that if you're watching this and you just got your first Garmin unit and live scope, that this is gonna help you guys become a better live scope fisherman on the water. Just remember too, live scope does not put fish in the boat, but it does take a lot of the guesswork out of it. So that's really all I've got for you guys today. If you have questions, comments, concerns, grievances, whatnot, please just leave a comment down below. While I appreciate all the uh, messages, DMs, emails, phone calls, text messages, all that stuff is mostly just for my guiding business that is not for live scope questions. I do not work for Garmin yet. They do not pay me to provide tech support uh, on a 24 seven basis. So if you guys have questions, Questions, just leave a comment down below and I will get to them as best I can. But if you guys like these Garmin videos, please subscribe. We're on a little push right now for uh, 20,000 subscribers. We're almost at 16, so I can't appreciate that enough. But if you guys wanna see more live scope videos or see ones that I've done before, please subscribe, drop a comment down below and like this video. But that's all I've got for you guys today. I'm just gonna kind of fish around and enjoy this nice day. It's actually below 80 degrees right now, which uh, it's been brutally hot, so it's a nice break. And that's all. So thank you guys again so much for watching and I will see you on the next video.